today we're looking at the Kleiners Ketten Kaftrad HK101, commonly referred to as the Ketten Krad. The designation SDKFZ2 sits within the category of unarmoured half tracks. The designer of this vehicle was a German engineer by the name of Heinrich Niekamp. He designed this vehicle along with the recommendations from the Luftwaffe. They wanted this type of vehicle to be able to tow both anti-tank and anti-aircraft guns for the Fallschirmjager units. Hence this vehicle has to be able to be fitted through the side door of the JU-52. It is three metres long, one metre wide, and the weight comes in at about 1.23 tonnes. So there's two main factories that built these. NSU, they produced in excess of about 8,800 vehicles. And when we look at Stuva, depending on the resource, anywhere between 1,300 to 1,500. But after the war, NSU continued to build these vehicles up till about 1947, 1948, where they built an additional 550 to be used for agricultural purposes. The Kent and Crad had a number of different roles. We can carry stores. In that case, we have this trailer here, the SDANH1, can carry about 350 kilos. Have two different lengths of drawbar, so you can actually shorten the length uh, from the vehicle. So when the trailer was not being used, the towing hitch can be folded up and stowed. On the back, we can carry two soldiers or 325 kilos of equipment. It could also carry communications wire. So without the trailer fitted, this could tow both an anti-tank gun, being the Pac-36, or an anti-aircraft gun, being the Flak 30. This vehicle was small, it was quiet, it had great off-road capabilities, which made it a perfect vehicle for reconnaissance roles. The engine in this vehicle is the Opel Olympus Model 38, four-stroke inline 1.5 litre or 1478 cc petrol engine. This produces about 38 horsepower at 3400 RPM. We have our toolbox, we have our battery box, we have uh, two fuel tanks, so right and left. Both hold 21 litres, so 42 litres in all. This will give us an operational range on road of about 250 kilometres. So this is a manual gearbox, three speeds in both high and low range gears. So we have three forward and one in reverse. To put it in reverse, so we don't do it accidentally, we've got to push down on the lever, push down on the clutch and push it in reverse. Throttle is just exactly like a conventional motorbike. We have the clutch pedal and on the right hand side we have the brake. If you're a tall person, you're going to be have your knees up high, but in that respect on the front of the vehicle inside we have knee pads. So when we're driving this, we liken it to a motorcycle, so we use the steering bars to turn on a wide radius. If we want to turn a lot tighter, once we go past five degrees, the Klee track differential braking kicks in, so it actually pulls the brake on, so if we're turning left on that left hand side, so it slows this track down, and the right hand track continues at speed and that allows us to do a tighter radius turn. There's 40 track links on the vehicle. Now these are lubricated tracks. So we have needle bearings that sit inside here. A pin goes through and allows you to join to the, the next track. We can put the oil inside this housing here and that gives us our lubrication. These four bolts here actually hold the track pads on. These four road wheels sit on a bell crank and are connected to a torsion bar. At the rear, we have the idler. There's a threaded bar that runs through the back and it'll pull back on the idler to give us our track tension. So on this front drive sprocket, they use rollers. So with most other fixed drive sprockets, you would get a lot of wear on the track and on the sprocket. Having a roller gives it a lot less friction to be able to move that track forward. So that's our short video on the Oz Armour Kettenkrad. If you've got a favorite tank or artillery piece, let us know in the comments. If we've got it, we'll make a video of it.